Hello. Welcome to the Untitled Car Show. The car obviously runs. It's running very well. I'm sorry, it's got a little bit of, uh, I don't know if you can see steam coming out of it here. The cap here is kind of overflowing. So we've got to figure out what's going on with that. Um, the temperature gauge is reading right where it should, which is good if that actually works. Um, the radio, no worky. Um, so yeah, so I don't think the um, fluid cap is on all the way. This isn't good. But, for whatever idiotic reason, I forgot to put a cap on the uh, reservoir up here. So that's not a good thing. And the cap's a little foobar. There we go. Put that back into place. Do that. There we go. Oh, so we're going to have to wait for this to come cool down a bit and see what the heck is going on with it. Um, I'll do a brief detail of what happened. So the clutch spring, or the clutch fork down there, I apologize for the steam, is being sticky. It wants to stick open. So moving the car is basically an exercise in the clutch either being like it will sit and it'll just barely be touching on the clutch plate and then you start to give it some gas and it locks immediately which means that you can't be any sort of ginger with it so you got to give it a lot of throttle to move it back and forth which is a pain in the ass also i think the brakes are sticking a little bit i don't know if it's in the front and rear where the hell they're sticking so we'll have to give a look at that <clears throat> Also, what we ended up doing is earlier today, I don't know if you see all the uh, fluid that decided to leak out onto the concrete. We started up the car and the fluid uh, was just overflowing. So this, as you can see here, here's the um, heat core, heating core. And I assumed there was a break in the wire. Come on, this door likes to stick. I think it's the actual heating core because the car's been parked in the garage and as you can see it's wet so my assumption is the heater core has been leaking for quite some time uh, it still feels a little damp down there but it's hard to tell if that's just from the uh, from condensation or what or just my imagination so as you can see the heater core has like a little drain pipe here that leaks out and goes down and uh, as you can see it's all it's got a little bit of wet around it so we poked our heads underneath which we can do right now underneath and like just starting up the engine all of this came out so that's not good obviously um, matter of fact it's leaking from back there now so woohoo we gotta get that plate back up that kind of helps protect the gas tank what we ended up doing is, I don't know if you can make out, um, see this tube here? It runs across, steady cam, steady cam mic. Where are we pointing? So this tube here um, runs up to the radiator. And at the end of that, we literally just put a U. Uh, that run, I'm sorry, it runs to the radiator and it runs to the heater core. So the ones that run to the heater core, we just use them back on themselves and uh, no more leaks coming from up front when we start the car. Now, we have no more leaks coming from the front of the car, but we got steam coming from the back of the car and it's cooking components. So we're going to have to uh, pull that and see what the heck happened. So it's fairly empty in there, which isn't a good sign. So we got to fill up the whole system all over again. But you don't want to put cold water in on top of, you know, super hot water because that can cause an issue. 
So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the front of the car and we're gonna start filling up from the front radiator section and work our way backwards. Um, that's kind of the way Fierro says you should be doing it anyway. So that's our plan. Okay, so I don't got one of them fancy, fancy um, coolant fill things. Um, as you can see there, that's all the way to the top. Um, and this is close, but no cigar. So we're going to make a fancy, fancy watertight one with good old friend electrical tape. So it helps when you got the uh, pressure cap all the way on. So what we're doing is you can see here that it's full, it's holding its level. When you put water in here, it overflows onto that. So the plan is we'll keep adding water. This is the highest point in the system right now. We'll keep adding water and as air bubbles and stuff come out and the thermostat comes on, we should see this start to go down. Okay, so it's loud, so just bear with me. But as you can see, that's staying where it's supposed to stay. The radiator fan is finally engaged, which is a good sign. We don't have any steam coming out from here. We're going to have to give that a little squeeze and see if it's uh, hollow or not, because that should be full of water right now. Um, other than that, it should be good. So let's, uh, yeah, not quite yet, unfortunately. So we need that to fill up with water. And when that fills up with water, this should be, uh, Good to go up here. So we well, just gotta wait play the waiting game. The only thing I really didn't anticipate was um how I'm gonna get this off without making a giant mess. So that's gonna be fun. Um Woohoo! Yeah, there's no way to do it. Alright, well there's nothing to it but to uh slowly leak out. That's great for all the electronics, but it, it works in a pinch if you need something to be, um, you know, watertight. And you don't mind making a little mess. I guess I could have improvised something else for it, but that is not the entitled car show way. So, we got that. That's got a little blow off valve. Yes, that's too high, too much water in there. But there's probably some more in the. Um, system that will help lead out. It's my only hope. And uh, yeah, should be good. Not endorsed by them, so not showing their uh, brain. Ah, unless I did. Yep. So we should be good. So what we're going to do, I think, is um, like I said earlier, we're going to have to figure out some solution to the clutch issue down there. Um, it's a matter of you know, do we sit there and do we uh, try and massage this one? Do we just do a whole clutch replacement? I'm going to try to keep this as bottom budget as possible. So, I mean, we spent zero money on it so far besides some fluids. Um, so, yeah, we'll see. Um, I'm open to thoughts and opinions. So, once we get that back, we'll, we'll put this back for the time being and then we'll uh, see what's going on. So, after running upstairs, cleaning myself up, I think I look a little bit more less homeless uh came back out in the air there's a very like i don't know if you've ever smelled rust um like burning which is a weird thing to say but rust like when you scrape it or you grind it which leads me to think that the um clutch is having a little bit of a uh, issue so i think the springs are actually rusted up on the clutch and that's what's giving me the issue so I didn't want to have to do a whole clutch job on this, but I think that's where we're going to have to go. Um, also, after I turned off the camera, because the battery died, uh, I actually managed to fix, if you can actually see, look, the hood. So the hood actually pops open now and will actually lock on me. It's still a little difficult. So I put in a new hinge and a new hinge cover, which actually was fairly easy. Um, just got to kind of put it all back together now. Uh, yeah, probably not the best view of me. This is hard to do with one hand. So I also put the antenna back on, um, which makes no difference in radio reception at all. So we just got to kind of button up a couple more things. I'm hoping if I massage the clutch, you know, 
why is this massage, whatever. You know, push in, push out, get the clutch, spring, maybe forcing how it should. We should be able to do this and get this thing a lot more streetable. Um, if it kind of continues to give me crap, I'm gonna have to do a whole clutch job. My hope was to put in as little money as possible into this to do, you know, fun projects and whatnot with it. But if you spend money where you have to spend money. So for me, the hope is spend it on paint, kind of making it look a little bit better. Um, the stuff like the clutch, don't really want to have to spend money on it, but I will if I have to. Um, I'm thinking about getting wind-up windows for this car instead of having the electric windows and the power mirrors. I kind of want to go back to old school and remove as much weight as possible, which I know is a little ridiculous, but that's kind of what, because I like the, you know, the hood you pull out manually. The power steering is all manual. The uh, transmission is obviously manual. So I don't see why having power windows and power locks and, you know, power mirrors and all that needs to be in there. Um, if I could get the windshield wipers to be manually operated, I would. So that's kind of where we're going with that. Um, so I'm curious about what all your thoughts are on all that is. Um, if you have anything else you want to see me do or work on the car, we still got to fix the headlight issue. It's kind of hard to see with the current lighting. Well, one headlight up, one headlight down, so it looks a little blinky. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's going along very well, I think. So thanks everyone so much for watching, following along with what I do. Um, if there's any project you want to see me work on on this car, this car here pointing is helpful, uh, let me know. Um, and other than that, thanks for keeping up with it. Like, comment, subscribe, whatever the YouTube-y stuff is. All right. Have a good one.